<clears throat> Hello and welcome to this video playing Grandmaster Bokharev. Yeah, that's a pretty high rated guy, I think. There's no info there, but I think he's <clears throat> 2600 Fide. So let's see what he plays against Mabenko. The most principled line. Uh, this will be a memorization job. <laughs> of course, I've done all this for the repertoire, but I still uh, confuse the lines a little bit. So I this is kind of kind of clear, but okay in that line. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this is right. Uh, but I don't don't quite remember from here. <laughs> um, can you just play like normal stuff? Oh, I think I think I actually take and play queen a six. I think I play with queen a six here. Yeah. Knight c4, however, how do I play against knight c4? I don't remember. Um, e6, I think it's e6 actually. I think e6 is right, but in Blitz I have trouble really remembering my own, <laughs> my own suggestions sometimes. I think it's e6. And now maybe rook e8, but I know I just I think I just take, right? I think I just take. And rook e8 probably now. Okay, so the thing is, I want to go d6, knight d7, but there is bishop to f4. This is, this could be an issue, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. I mean, uh, like d6, bishop f4, knight d7, bishop d6, knight b6 is an issue for him, I think. Knight b6. Maybe he can go knight e5. Oh, then I take d3 and d5. Okay, so that should work actually. So, okay, he just covers that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bishop f8 is not a dream move here. Really not. Mm. Knight h5. Bishop takes knight b6. You have to play really actively. You cannot uh, play passive moves in the banco. At least uh, not. That's not a usual policy. Bishop f8. I don't want to play. Knight h. Knight takes bishop d6. Knight b6. I don't. I don't know. I have to recheck this line again. It's difficult. I mean, even even me, I'm having. I have compiled this repertoire for chessable, but it's uh, there. There are lots of lines, and it's not um, not that straightforward. There are there are different approaches quite often, and um, I simply don't remember all of the lines. At least um, when it comes to. When it comes to blitz chess, I sometimes struggle. If I have a little bit of time, I, I can remember everything, but it's not so easy in a blitz game. So let's see here. I'm, I'm two pawns down, but still reasonably active. Yeah, the d pawn is a big problem, of course. Yeah, a3 is a good move. Ah, this one, okay. 
didn't really think so much about this, but it's it's okay, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the end, he's got the D pawn. <sighs> Wants to play with knight g4. Him. And he attacks my rook. Hmm. Yeah, that that's losing. I simply I simply didn't remember my my theory here, and it is um, it is pretty crucial. Yeah, one thing that I have on my list to do is actually to log into uh, into Chessable and uh, basically learn my own my own stuff. <laughs> it's um. It's really one thing to have written, uh, analyzed everything, but then to uh, make sure that you have it all in your memory is a different kind of animal. You, you really have to time warning. Have to um, invest a bit of time to do that. Okay, so I'm kind of hanging in here, yeah, but it's, it's of course losing. Yeah, it's also it's two pawns is the thing. I mean, just the just the d pawn would probably lose as well, but um, with the a pawn, the d pawn you sometimes can stop because the king is so close, but um, it's quite difficult if it's um, two pawns. Okay, here knight e six is a little bit annoying. The, the pin here on the fourth rank. Let's see like, this one, okay. Five is not not a real threat. Mm, yeah, I'm thinking knight a five maybe would do something, but doesn't. It might be six now as a as a threat. Yeah, the line that he played with knight d uh, two isn't actually all that dangerous. But as I said, I just have forgotten. Okay, knight f five. Check. Black I just have resigns. forgotten what to what to exactly do against it. I'm fairly certain that. Uh, that this is okay, and I'm also quite positive about e6. It's um, something that I should check. Maybe let me let me check that right away and uh, see see what it is. I'm I'm back in a second. Okay, so I have checked <laughs> what I have to do here, and I indeed have forgotten my recommendation. Um, here, black should go d6. And the idea is that um, yeah, white will probably castle now. And now is an interesting idea, knight f to d7, which is pretty, um, that, that's, that's not very typical to move the f knight to d7, but it makes perfect sense here as there's a direct attack on c3. And black sometimes just gives up that bishop if he gets the pawn back and potentially even get the a pawn. Yeah, this is, this is okay for black. Um, it's not that easy for white to, to play this position. The computer actually suggests this move. 
which, um, well, it is a sign that this is probably a, a decent position for black. My um, idea was then to play with knight to b6, and, and the later um, strategy is to play c4 at the right moment and play the knight over to c5. It's a very fairly typical play for the Banco Gambit. It's um, for me. It's a bit tricky to remember in this repertoire, and it's um, probably it's the same for the um, for for any other um, player learning the Banco. Is that in this modern interpretation of the Banco, where Black is not moving those pawns early, you sometimes have this option to play e6 without d6. And this is often good, but not every time. And it's something that uh, I you really have to master. I mean, I've looked at it and I've uh, found good solutions, but you still have to remember it. And um, it's something, as I said, I have to basically learn my own repertoire again to, um, yeah, to be totally sure what happens in in any um, any circumstance. So, I mean, this is probably this is not terribly bad. It's just that. Probably um, the other option is, is a lot better. So I tried this. And um, yeah, the thing is, I have to go d6 here. And if bishop f4, knight d7, th this was tactically, I think, okay. Knight b6 now should be good. Yeah, something, I cannot take it. The, the, it is threatened and there is an indirect attack on this. So here yeah, I'm very okay. But he played the strong move rook ad1. And now I don't really have something good. I think this is relatively speaking the best. And uh, that's, uh, the computer agrees. And now the comp wants to play knight d7. Yeah, giving white a clear advantage. It's two pawns. And against uh, two pawns, it's difficult to. Uh, yeah, with, with two pawns down, it's difficult. Yeah, and he, def he de played that well. Um, defending is a, is a wrong word, but like. <laughs> yeah, he kept my my modest uh, initiative here and check nicely yeah okay i'm mean, oh, still kind of hanging hanging in here but it is it is losing maybe there was some some chance around here i don't know the engine doesn't doesn't find anything yeah it felt um like he did a good job there yeah there's nothing much to say here this is uh, a case where it's all about being precise in the opening. So I have to remember that here d6 is correct. This is really um, one of the few um, uh, situations in that, in the Benko, the, this modern Benko, where you can screw it up totally if you don't really uh, know on which right continuation to play e6, d6, a combination. Yeah, and um, I've, I've made a mistake here. And I've, I've, I've made a similar mistake in an earlier game. It's something that I really have to, uh, yeah, uh, learn better. Uh, even though I've, <laughs> I've looked at it all for the repertoire, you still have to um, refresh your memory. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.